part two of how to grow big onions from seed and this video is going to walk you through how to maintain your seedlings, how to trim them and make sure that they grow big and strong all the way to how to plant them out in the garden. If you missed part one of this video, the first in the series, that taught you how to plant the onion seeds. And when we left off, our onions had just sprouted and we were making sure that they were all getting out of the soil okay and standing up nice and straight and trimming them if they needed it. Before we get into the trimming practices, let's talk about light and water for a second because they're really important. When the onions are this little, I like to use a bottle that I can pour a gentle stream from just like this so that I'm not flopping the onions over or kind of washing them out with the water. As far as how often to water, that will really differ depending on the container that you're using. If you're using a small container, you'll need to water more often. I like to wait until the soil gets ever just slightly dry between waterings and then water them really good, really saturating the soil. And I'm just using our tap water, our good well water, to water these. I don't need to add anything extra to it. If you remember from the previous video, part one, I made sure to use soil that had fertilizer and nutrients already in it. So that means I don't have to add anything extra. It's really important that your seedlings have light the second they emerge from the soil. So make sure you have your grow light set up and ready to go. But it's also important that your seedlings don't get too much light. Onions are highly governed by the number of daylight hours, so make sure you don't have your grow light on for more than 12 hours a day and make sure it coincides with the natural sunlight. The seedlings are about four to five days old here. They're looking great, loving life, and I would say that the first week or two is really critical time in making sure they get off to the best start possible. So the first week, I am checking on them every day or two looking for ones that need a little help like this one right here any that have this tight bow shape, which can either be cut with the scissors or sometimes I very gently kind of pull the top out of the soil. When the onions are growing out in the garden, we want them to be able to grow really straight and tall and not be flopping all over the place. And it's best to set them up for that right now. So this first week of their growth, I am gonna stay on top of trimming them. I am cutting any that are bent over or any that are really leaning because I want these to be as straight as possible. And you know, keeping them watered and keeping them trimmed is pretty straightforward and pretty simple, but I will show you what that looks like over the course of their life until they're planted out. The onions are about 10 days old and I'm still coming through and checking on them like every few days or so, looking for stragglers like this one that might need a little bit of help. And then of course, I am also trimming up any that are leaning or bent. Pretty soon here when the onions get a little bit older and taller, I'll be coming through and giving them a bulk haircut where I just trim everybody, but we're not quite there yet. So for now, I'm still cherry picking who needs to be trimmed and only trimming the ones that are really leaning. One other thing I've noticed around this day 10 mark is look right behind my finger here. The onion seedlings are starting to get their second set of leaves, which is not really um, important for anything other than I think it's cool to see and it means that they're growing and doing well. Also around this time in their growth is when I like to put a fan on them. I prefer an oscillating fan as opposed to a fan that blows on them constantly all the time. And this will help to strengthen them up and get them ready to go outside. And uh, side note, I feel like I should point this out if you're wondering what in the world is going on around this table. This is just the catacade that is the barricade to keep the cat off the table and out of my seedlings. This gentle breeze just helps to toughen them up. It simulates more of an outdoor environment because it is not windy in my house, even a little bit, of course. And I usually leave the fan on during the daylight hours only because I don't like to hear it at night, but you can leave it on all day and all night if you want. One note along with this is that especially if you're using smaller containers, having a fan on will dry the soil out a little quicker, so make sure you're checking on them often. A few more days have passed, and look at this. The second leaves are continuing to get bigger. I did want to point out one little wonky thing that sometimes happens. Do you see that bubbling of the seedling right there? This is nothing to worry about, but I did want to point it out because it looks a little bit funny and can be alarming if you don't know what it is. This is sometimes what it looks like when that second set of leaves starts to unfurl. It'll sometimes bend the whole seedling over. 99% of the time, those leaves unfurl on their own and are just fine. Once in a while, I'll get one that's on the struggle bus and I'll have to help it out a bit. Around this two-ish week mark is also the time when I start checking the bottom of the container for roots. You probably can't quite see it, but I'm looking at the little hole in the bottom and you see those two little white specks there? Those are the onion roots that are starting to come out of the bottom. And that's important because it tells me that the roots are at the bottom and now I can start watering these from the bottom instead of the top. 
and I greatly prefer bottom watering. It is better for the seedlings. It's way easier for me. And so as soon as I see that, I start to water this way. Now, if you have smaller containers, you will probably see that a little bit sooner, but with these really, really tall ones, it usually takes around two weeks. As far as how much water to use for this size container and how many containers I have, I'm adding about three to four cups of water each time, and that will last me probably about five to six days before I need to water again. The seedlings are about three weeks old now and totally out of control. Somebody hasn't been caring for these properly. That somebody is me. I probably should have checked on these a few days ago and trimmed them up, but the important part is that I'm doing it now, and you can see there's just, they've taken off growing almost so much that they can't handle themselves. They're a little bit more top heavy than ever, and they really need a good trim back. And same as before, same as always, I'm going through and picking out the ones that are really leaning and giving them a haircut. And sometimes it's a little bit drastic, especially when I've neglected them a little bit. You can see there are some that are really, really sideways. And in order to get them to stand straight again, I have to cut them back quite a bit. When I'm done trimming, I always check to see if they need water and they do. I just like to feel the top of the soil. If it feels dry and if the containers feel a little bit light, that usually means they need a drink. And at this point, they're growing so fast that they've graduated to needing more like six to eight cups of water. And what I'm looking for is that this amount of water that I give them will be soaked up within an hour or two and will make it all the way to the top of the cup. So I can actually see the soil on the top turn from dry like it is now to moist. And that's how I know they have enough water. The seedlings are just shy of a month old now, and they're about six inches tall, which means that they graduate to getting their bulk haircut. Instead of going through and picking out just the ones that are leaning and cutting those, I am going to go through and trim these kind of like grass where I am trimming everyone down. I want them to be about five inches tall. And because I've done a good job up until now with making sure that I was trimming any that are leaning, it's really not a problem anymore. You can see there are a couple on the end there that got a little bit wild and crazy, but for the most part, everyone is just growing straight and nice. And from now on, I will just come through about every week or so, as often as they need it, and trim them just like this. In addition to helping them stand up straight, this kind of weekly trim will also encourage them to grow thicker and stronger, which is exactly what we want as they prepare to go out into the garden. The seedlings are about five weeks old and they're looking quite floppy today and that's for a couple reasons. Number one, they desperately need to be watered. I should have watered these probably two days ago at least, so they need a really good drink and I'm going to give them that right away. But then I wanted to point something else out. One thing that always happens around this time is that I think it's that first set of leaves that they initially grew starts to die. And that's what you see flopping around the top of the cup there. They will yellow, they'll fall down, and then they'll shrivel up and turn brown and dead and dry. And although it makes them look almost not as healthy, it's totally normal. And I promise your onions are not dying. They're just fine. These are the same onions I just showed you. Same day. I gave them a good drink and let them sit for a while. They perked right up. So I did not cut out the ones that were leaning and really floppy because I knew they were floppy because they just needed water. That is to say, if at any point during their growth, you feel like your onions are just flopping and flopping and they won't stand up, uh, make sure that they're watered properly and that the water is where the roots are. And onion maintenance should be pretty smooth sailing from here on out. I'm just going to keep these trimmed to about five to six inches, trimming them about once a week as they need it. I'm going to keep them watered and just wait until it warms up enough to bring these outside. When spring temperatures are in the 40s Fahrenheit is when I start to bring the onions outside for the first time and harden them off. And hardening off just means you introduce them to the outdoors slowly so you don't totally shock them because it is a fairly drastic difference from in the house to outdoors this time of year. I usually try to pick a string of days that it's going to be cloudy because then I can get away with leaving them outside almost the entire day. If it's not, if it's really sunny, I'll maybe bring them out for two hours the first day and then I'll put them in the shade for the rest of that day. And then the next day I'll add an hour, so I'll bring them out for three hours and then put them in the shade, and then so on until they're up to a full day out in the sunshine. And now starts what I like to call the springtime plant shuffle. It's still a little bit cool here during our overnights, so the plants will come out during the day, but I have to bring them in the house for the night. This shuffling of plants is usually just the first week or so, and of course it depends on the year. My rule of thumb is that if the overnight temperature is going to be below 40, 41, 42, somewhere in there, I'll bring them in for the night, and I just keep them in the bathroom and close the door to keep the cat out of them. 
And then once it warms up for the day, they go back outside and I keep doing this. I keep doing the plant shuffle until it's warm enough that they stay outside all day and all night and eventually warms up enough that they finally go on the ground. If the situation arises where it's too cold during the daytime, I just keep them inside for the day and hope that it warms up the next day. And it's also worth noting that this whole time I'm also still keeping them watered and keeping them trimmed to about five to six inches, just like we did before. Today is the day the onions are going into the ground. It's about two weeks before our average last frost date. I've looked at the forecast, it's looking generally pretty good. Onions can certainly tolerate cold temperatures and they can even withstand a light frost. I just really wouldn't want them to be subject to a hard freeze though. So if you're looking at the forecast and you see temperatures in the lower 20s, I might hold off a little bit and wait until that passes to plant them because they can be damaged if they are subject to temperatures around 20 degrees or colder. I gave the onions a pretty strong trim back and now I'm gonna remove them from the container and it's really easy to do. You definitely wanna use finesse though and not force, but just grasp them and pull them right out. You might have to wiggle them a little bit too. Don't be alarmed by the mass of roots. They actually come apart pretty easily. And here's the trick, get a bucket of water and do a little dunking and swishing. Be gentle, of course, but keep swishing them around until most of the dirt has come off. Onion roots are actually very strong. They will break if you pull them too hard, but they can handle a fair amount of tugging. I like to start by breaking up the bottom just a little bit because that's where they're most tangled. And then if you gently separate them, they should come right apart. Occasionally there's one that's a little sticky and needs a little bit of wiggling or a little bit more gentle teasing out, but really they should come apart easily and you should have minimum root breakage. If they're seeming really stubborn, it might be that you didn't get enough of the soil off and they need another swish in the water. Another thing you can do is that if you're grabbing one onion and it just seems really resistant, just ignore that one, leave it and go to a different one. It'll probably come loose as you get more of the onions out and more of that tangle undone. To plant the onions, Carl digs a deep hole to accommodate all of the roots and then fills it in and presses down firmly to make sure that the onion is set really nicely into the soil. We like to plant our onions really shallowly. I like the bulb to sit on top of the soil. So he's basically just burying the roots in like the tiniest part of the end of the bulb. We plant them about six inches apart in the row and you can see Carl's using a tape measure to make sure he's accurate. And then we plant the rows about two feet apart. As far as how often to water, we live in an area that typically gets a lot of rain. So we almost never have to water our garden. Of course, this is gonna be different depending on where you live and onions need at least an inch of water a week. So we're gonna keep these watered and weeded and I'll talk about harvesting in part three of this video series. As always, let me know if you have questions and if you found this video helpful, I would love it if you could give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you are the first to know whenever a new video is posted.